how does a vending machine make sure picky customers get the exact snack they're after? What makes a grand piano sound fill a concert hall with just the touch of a finger? And how do daredevil rope workers stay safe 100 feet above ground? To answer these mysteries, we dive deep inside these extraordinary machines to reveal the secrets of how they work. The vending machine. How does this device give hungry customers the snack they're after, but keep out any freeloaders? More than 2,500 parts work in unison. An anchored steel shell, as tough as a security safe. A compact cooling system. Pumps at 2,000 times a minute to keep the contents cool. 500 feet of loaded coils. Shuttle the goods into reach and a smart anti-theft door keeps them safe from prying hands to serve over 6,000 snacks every year. The key to survival in a world where everyone's after a free snack is the way that workers build the vending machine's rugged skeleton. At America's fastest growing vending machine company in Illinois, they make their machines tough to crack. People are always going to try to get a free candy bar or a can of soda. Chad makes the panels that form the heavy-duty metal cabinet. Our vending machines need to be strong uh, to keep people from breaking into them and stealing all the profits and product. <laughs> the five hundredths of an inch thick metal will stand up to kicks and blows without a dent. This machine won't give up its goodies without a fight. Once cut, welders fuse the cabinet walls into place. The heavy-duty joins make sure there's no easy openings for prying hands to break in. When you're hungry, you never quite have the right coins for the snack you want. How does the machine know to send back anything fake and keep track of how much you've paid the machine deciphers coins with pinpoint accuracy. Light sensors measure the size, and electromagnets detect the metal type, identifying the coins in split seconds and sorting them into columns, diverting fakes to the reject chute. When change is due, the columns carefully release one coin at a time tumbling into the chute. These 85 parts work together to count 15,000 coins a year and release your snack at the touch of a button. Some of these vending machines will spend their entire lives outdoors. So to make sure it's fit to serve you snacks, each machine needs protection from the elements. If you don't paint it, it's going to rust really quick. I would say within the first year. <laughs> Tim heads up the paint team. First, he power washes the raw metal clean. Then, Tim's ovens burn off any remaining water. My first oven is at almost 500 degrees, so it's pretty hot in here all day. <laughs> and to provide the ultimate finish, Tim must enter a brutal paint shop to complete the job by hand. Weatherproofing an entire vending machine is a tough task. Robotic sprayers add a coat of powdered paint. The powder is electrically charged, so it sticks to the metal. Tim touches up any spots the sprayers miss. 
he has to work fast. The conveyor only moves at one mile an hour, but there are a lot of hard to reach spots on a cabinet nearly six feet tall. A final bake fuses the paint, then Tim inspects the rust resistant finish. Well, this cabinet, now that it's finished, has actually got a nice even coat over the top of it. It is now fully protected over all the elements for wherever we're gonna ship it out. But when you're hungry, there's nothing more frustrating than your snack getting stuck. How do today's generation of vending machines make sure you get your treat every time? Hidden behind the keys, a computer orders one of 32 matchbox-sized motors to turn the spiral 360 degrees. As the snack falls, it breaks a line of 10 infrared beams. If nothing crosses the beams, the computer makes the coils turn again. With this ingenious technology, you'll always get your snack and never leave hungry. Snack dispensing coils are the distinctive feature of a vending machine. These spirals of spring steel trap the goodies until you've parted with your cash. But how does one basic shape handle everything from sandwiches to soda cans? My job here is to make sure that you put the right size coils for the right size product. Justin custom builds the coil mechanism for each machine. He installs a set of miniature motors. They drive gear wheels that rotate each coil just far enough to push a product off the shelf. Large or uneven shaped snacks require two coils. The coils need to have opposite spirals Otherwise, the snack won't budge. So this would be a dual coil here. Your snack would fit in this area. So you have a right and a left. Your right go one way, your left go the other way. So that when your coils spin, they spin opposite of each other, but still bend that product forward. If they're going the same direction of each other, then it's going to drive it backwards versus driving the product forward. So the final stage in the process is clipping it in and making sure that your coils rotate properly. A squashy bag of potato chips is a tough test for the coils. If they aren't fitted right, it won't move. So it looks like it vended just fine. They wouldn't have any worry about their product hanging up and it's working properly. So I'm confident on sending this machine out to someone. The machine is ready for a lifetime of dishing out instant snacks to hungry customers. The Grand Piano. In the right hands, this instrument can lift our spirits and transform our mood. Like a purring classic sports car, beneath the sleek exterior lies a machine of astonishing power and complexity. More than 12,000 components fit together inside 17 layers of hard maple wood, 243 tightly wound strings, exert 22 tons of tension on the cast iron frame. 88 keys, each made of more than 50 pieces, strike the strings for just two thousandths of a second. A solid wood soundboard resonates the notes at over 100 decibels, as loud as a jackhammer. The king of instruments is so robust, it can produce the perfect tone every day for over 100 years. The piano's outer rim helps resist the incredible 22 tons of tension from the 243 strings. At this 145-year-old factory in New York, it takes more than 200 craftspeople almost an entire year to build a concert grand piano. Workers here know the secret to a successful rim. 
it takes six people to bend its curved shape. Workers must form the rim from a single stretch of wood to give maximum strength and superior sound quality. Since it's 17 laminations and 20 feet long, it's one of the hardest rims to bend. Lorenzo runs the rim bending crew. First, they coat the 17 layers of maple with glue. Then, Lorenzo's crew has just 20 minutes to force the three and a quarter inch stack of strips into a piano shape. Get this wrong, and the rim is wrecked. The crew creating the Grand Piano's rim has just 20 minutes to force three curves into this 20-foot length of wood. Uh, the guys are closing it up with the wrenches. With the, uh, we're going to use a ratchet wrench to close it at 250 pounds of torque per square inch. 23 clamping posts resist over 1,000 pounds of tension. Once the glue sets, Workers line it up alongside 250 others in the conditioning room. Three months in this hot room gradually draws the moisture out of the wood, transforming the 17 layers into a single solid structure. This helps the rim withstand the incredible tension pulling across the piano. For a loud note, the piano's strings need to be struck hard. But the pianist's fingers would soon tire if they had to generate all the hitting power. How does a light touch of a key hit the strings with formidable force? More than 4,000 pieces link the keys to the strings. The key seesaws deep into the piano. Lifting a set of intricate levers, these amplify the motion, so the hammer moves five times the distance at five times the speed, transforming the touch of a finger to the power of a punch. This intricate design has magnified the pianist's movements for centuries. The piano has a built-in amplifier to make sure that each note really has the power to be heard above a full orchestra. Hidden beneath the strings, the soundboard raises the volume. This is what gives us the sound of the piano. This is the main component. This is the heart and soul of the piano. Henry gives every soundboard maximum volume. An extremely subtle curve across the wood gives it an amplifying boost. This crown magnifies vibrations from the strings, just like the cone of a megaphone. It's made by the hot, wet air in this room. So we're adding moisture to the board itself. Once we start adding that moisture, the board will naturally crown. It'll naturally develop that, that arc in it that we're looking for. Now it has its crown, a craftsman places the bowed board inside the piano rim. But pure volume isn't enough. The pianist can subtly alter the quality of every note using the pedals resting just under his feet. The pedals drive levers into the heart of the piano. They move hundreds of components with one touch. The sustain pedal lifts woolen dampers, so the string's vibrations linger. The soft pedal shifts 4,000 parts, seven hundredths of an inch to the right, so the hammers hit just two strings rather than three. With this intricate system, just one tap of the foot creates moving music. Thankfully, 
pianists never need to think about the complex mechanisms that create each note. But they do rely on every key reacting in exactly the same way. This is the balancing room. The craftspeople here make sure every one of the 88 seesawing keys raises its hammer with the exact same touch. So it can't come up too fast and it can't come up too slow. They have it come up just right. Gwen makes sure every key is perfectly poised. First, she patiently positions different weights on each note to find the sweet spot where the key will play with minimal force. This is the small I put here. It's not moving. It's not doing anything, so I have to put the large, you see? But the large is fast, so you have to move it to the right position to make it balance good, you see? That's what you want. So I'm going to mark the key when it gives me the right balance. Once she's happy, Gwen marks the position where a matching weight will be drilled into the key. Her careful work makes sure every hammer lifts with the same force from a pianist's finger. 300 years of fine tuning has generated this mechanical marvel. The piano, the perfect marriage of art and engineering. When you're working at height, a fall could be fatal. The abseil safety catch allows rope workers to keep hanging on if something goes wrong. It's attached to the safety rope. A gentle pull allows you to drop at your own pace. Let go, and it locks on tight. How does this device give you the freedom to move, but hold on if the main rope fails? 34 parts work together to save your neck. A lightweight aluminum body encircles the rope. A spring-loaded stainless steel cam with smooth-edged teeth that can bite down on the rope without cutting it. And an ergonomic, heavy-duty aluminum and nylon handle that allows you to descend but locks in less than a second if you let go to catch you before you even fall. With lives hanging on the line, the catch must be strong enough to survive under stress. It takes a special process to create its intricate shape from a single piece of metal. The abseil catch keeps rope workers hanging on so they can stay safe dangling 100 feet off the ground. Metal workers at this UK factory use an unusual technique to ensure each catch hangs tough. Just in a blink of an eye, it's done. Darren looks after a unique set of machines. The hot forge. So hot forging is a process where you, you heat a piece of metal up to a very high temperature to make it a lot softer and allow it to, to form to shape better. The metalsmith heats raw aluminum blocks to 840 degrees. Hot enough to soften, but not melt the metal. Then he unleashes a 130-ton hammer blow to knock the catch into shape. The catch body emerges from a single piece of metal with fewer weak points where it could fail. So rather than having multiple pieces that you then bolt together in additional processes, you can use one single piece, which, uh, which is a lot safer, so there's less things to go wrong. The catch's clever design allows you to descend with a gentle tug of the handle. When there's no need to move, it sits static on the safety rope. But what if the main rope were to fail? In an accident, a natural reaction is to reach for the handle. But the last thing you want is to drop. So the catch has an emergency feature that holds on if you grab it in a panic. 
The catch's handle has two halves, one plastic, one metal. They pivot on a hinge in the center. It grips a pin that connects to the catch cam. Squeezing the grip in a panic releases the cam to lock down on the rope and stop you in your tracks. This way, if anything goes wrong, the catch won't let you down when you're 100 feet up. Workers bolt the parts together in the assembly room to complete the catch. The hardened steel cam locks between the plates before the life-saving grip handle clips into place. The ingenious Absil safety catch, a simple but vital device. You might never need it, but if you do, you'll be very grateful for its rope-grabbing grip. The vending machine, the grand piano, and the Absil safety catch. What's inside isn't always big, but it is clever. Next time you see one of these machines, remember, there's more to how they work than meets the eye.